Okay, I'm Paul Bowman um, from, uh, I actually live in Enfield. Uh, I'm an eighth Dan um, in Ruku Kempo and also Shotokan Karate. Uh, I've been doing it for now for 43 years, actually 43 years tomorrow, Sunday. Um, I started off back in Harlow, Essex, back in 1964, um, where I started with a, a Shotokai club, uh, which was actually under Arada. Sensei, who was, uh, he was dead now. He was a fifth Dan, a very small guy with dark rim glasses. Uh, but I actually trained with the instructor, was a blue belt at the time. So it was not a lot of uh, karate around, very little at that time. There was plenty of judo around, and I did actually do a little bit of judo when I was seven. But so I don't count that. I, I really actually started when I was 13 uh, with karate back in 64. Um, they brought a rider down this, this particular time and uh, I watched him perform, he was a very small guy, must have been about seven stone. And he got the instructor, he was a real big guy. And he put s ten people in a row, in a line, and he put this padding on the, on the big guy at the front. And he punched, he said, karate punch, and he punched with a karate punch, and he said, no good. He said, now I hit with feeling. And he hit this guy, he went, oh, and the guy on the back flew off the back and down on the floor. So back at that time, there was something. Um, I went on, I got a black belt, uh, then I moved to Enfield from Harlow, uh, and then I started a Shotokan club, training under Eddie Witcher and people uh, that, as unfortunately, he's dead now as well. And Kanazawa, uh, we was in that, I was in that association for some years, um, and also KUGB um, for a little while, um, and then I actually went on with uh, Charles Mack, um, British Shotokan Karate Shimbaku Association, uh, which I did for a while, and then um, I was doing like basic karate, doing all the blocks the same as everyone else. But we had a little bit of a twist to it. Um, we were actually doing break falls and stuff like that. We were maybe a bit before our time. We used to have a lot of other karate clubs coming over and used to train with us, and they used to we used to do sweeps and throws even in Shotokan Karate at that time and uh, they used to fall on their elbows, their knees, but all of my students, every one of them could break fall. Uh, so we actually made that as a basis to learn. Uh, so they break fall. Um, we started to do other techniques because I actually brought throwing into Shotokan Karate way back um, in the uh, late 70s. I actually went to Japan and, and graded. Um, a, a reasonably high grade and then I came back and this, with such politics, uh, you know, in the martial arts and, and associations, I thought, right, I'm going to start my own association, which was Zenderu, uh, which has been going now since, I think, early 90s, I think we actually started that, I think about 1990. I met actually George in 1989 uh, in a big seminar up in, um, up at Leverhead, up that way, and uh, there was about 180 people at that seminar, um, which, uh, was amazing. You had people outside waiting for him to come out when when it ended. A really a big thing at that time. But he actually changed my way of martial arts because I'm only a little guy, I'm only five foot three. And uh, I used to do all the blocking like everyone else and uh, you know as well as I do, a, big, a good big guy will always be a good small guy. But uh, with the pressure points he actually turns the tables, he actually uh, evens the playing field and now the first guy I ever knocked out uh, was six foot six and uh, <laughs> It was funny, really. I was teaching the class, uh, and I knocked, I tapped this guy, and I said, "Are you okay?" And turned away and started talking to the class. And the next, I heard this thing behind me. I turned around. He's asleep. He's on the deck. He's dropped. Uh, then obviously, I had to quickly resuscitate and uh, bring him back. Um, but yes, um, George Dillman um, changed everything for me. It made uh, my martial arts work. So everything that I was taught before with the blocking. It actually helps with the kata, the forms, because it gives you the angle and direction that you need to hit the pressure points. So yes, um, even it actually gives you good foundations to be a you know for the uh, to bring on to the to the pressure points. I think um, so. Uh, I think that was a good foundation for me. And then, as I say, I came into the pressure points after that. I can remember, uh, you know, I used to block with the best of them. Um, 
And then, as I say, when I met George, um, he actually he actually took me to one side and he said, "Look at all these people in this room." He said, "Look at the size of these guys. Do you honestly believe that you could actually block these guys in f for real? If you know, if it really came down to it, to a real fight." Uh, and you think about it, you think, "Well, maybe not." And then uh, he got me into. He said, "You really need to learn this." So I got into it. I studied it. Um, I got books on it, um, and I. You know, this was actually when I first met him. He'd only just about to bring his first book out. Um, but I started, you know, studying acupuncture and and the points, um, and then I started to make it work. And I studied with George whenever I could. Um, I'd go over to him, or he'd come come over to th this country. And um, and also with Professor Wally J, which is another great practitioner, um, with his small circle jujitsu and the pressure point mixed together. It made it absolutely lethal. It was fantastic, and I was dropping such big guys as you wouldn't believe. I actually went to Northampton to uh, a bodybuilder's uh, place, and also bodyguards and doormen. And it was quite funny. I went in there. They see me come in, and they said, "This is the guy who's going to be teaching you today." So I walked in there, and um, <laughs> you can sort of tell, like they're all big guys, and they're seeing this little guy, and then this little guy is going to teach me. And this this big guy come up to me, big big guy, and he come up and he said, um, "No one could knock me out. I've never been knocked out." And he had a little he had a stud through here. So I sort of looked at him like that, and I thought, "Hmm." So I just knocked him out. Um, didn't tell him what I was going to do. I just knocked him straight out. I woke him up. Everyone in that room was looking. And that seminar that I did that day turned out to be fantastic. Everyone had such respect. But maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't, but it actually worked for me at that time, so that's why I did it. The stud was there, that's, that's helpful because it's going through a fr pressure point there. So um, I actually struck that and struck uh, gallbladders and bladders at the back of his head and uh, neck, and he just dropped like a stone. And, uh, which actually helped me that, that day for the seminar because you could tell by the way they were looking think, how can you bring this little guy in to teach us? We're, we're big guys. But it was quite funny because through the, through the day I, I actually got on their pressure points, these big guys, and they were screaming like babies. It was quite funny really. You know, to see these big guys dropping on the floor. There's little me, five foot three. But I owe it to George, thanks to him. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be doing it. So, yeah, that was, that was a good seminar. <laughs>